everyone, this is Finn. You're watching Warframe Unabridged. Today we're going to take a look at the final power belonging to Oberon. This power is called Reckoning, and it is actually a really good power. It's a very misunderstood power, but it is very good. So at its base, it deals 1,250 damage and has a 50% chance of producing a health orb from anyone that it kills. It has a range of 15 meters, in which anybody affected by it is forced into a knockdown, and anybody affected by it is blinded for four seconds, they emit a blind within four meters that affects other people, and they are confused. And that's actually a really good combination of features that make this a very impressive power. Now where it's not impressive is the damage, due to it being smaller than you would see from other frames with similar radial ultimates. Those like uh, Frost, who deals 1500, or Ash, who deals 2000 even, uh, Mag, who deals 1500 as well. But I promise you the damage isn't all that bad when you take into account a few things, um, but it's, it's not going to be in-game style of damage. So I promise the damage isn't all that bad when it comes to the star chart, but after that you're going to have some problems for sure. Now it's rarely fair to compare two different frames and their powers because it's usually taking into comparison things that are outside of the kit, which means they're outside of the context, and things tend to fall apart for any frame when you do it that way. So we're looking at damage 2.0 right now because it's imperative to understand damage 2.0 to really be able to appreciate how frames and their abilities work, okay? so. I'm providing a little bit of context to that, and I'm going to first refer you to the Damage 2.0 page on the wiki so that you can get a basic understanding of the penalties and the bonuses that they gain. Now for Frost, he deals 1500, but consider the fact that his bonuses, uh, they're against shielding and alloy, okay? And that turns that 1500 into 1875 versus alloy, and 2250 versus shields. Now, Mag normally deals 1,500 even, but versus Shielding, she gains a hefty bonus of 2625, okay? Now, Radiation has a very, uh, it's a very peculiar element. It deals 75% bonus damage versus Alloy Armor, so it would also be around 2625 versus that type. But the actual strength and integrity of the armor then mitigates it as a separate function, which is kind of, it's kind of bogus. So that's why you rarely see those numbers in higher end uh, versus higher end enemies. It's also why characters like Ash receive no mitigation because his damage bypasses armor entirely, which is why he absolutely doesn't need to have 2,000 damage even. It's actually extraordinarily unfair if you ask me, considering he remains completely invincible. He doesn't have to really pay any attention while he's doing it, and yes, that even includes the very recent rework. So, at this point, you would think that the damage dealt by Reckoning would excel versus the Grenier, but unfortunately, the mitigating power of armor makes the damage fall off earlier than many other frames would uh, be able to handle. This is why Oberon tends to wind up not being favored in terms of damage. This is also what makes the Grenier the most powerful faction, because even people with damage bonuses against them are still mitigated into the ground. Shields, on the other hand, have no form of mitigation built in, and neither does pure health. Now, shields, that's why Mag needed her rework. Okay, she was just absurdly powerful, and we'll talk about that in a later video. So, because of this, Better results are gained by frames that deal bonus damage against those types, like health and stuff like that. In addition, radiation is also mitigated by other health types. It does gain a bonus versus robotics, but has negative penalties against the shields they use, which is the majority of their health most of the time. And most robotics that have health beyond shields and all of that good stuff, it's also armor. So. Once you're past the shields, which you're weak against, you will then have your damage mitigated by their armor. Now don't despair though, because he has a lot of other tricks up his sleeve, even if he's not a damage dealing frame inherently. For starters, Reckoning essentially stops the battlefield around him. Without any mods, he shuts off any enemy that is within 15 meters of him. Okay, you can of course increase the range on that and make it that much more useful. Because of the force lift and the force knockdown, 
and the blinds, the fact that they're blinded for four seconds, the fact that they're confused, which allows enemies to target and be targeted by one another. If he happens to kill them with enemy or with reckoning, you know he has a chance of getting a health orb, and that alone expands his his kit quite significantly. When all is said and done, reckoning is an effective amalgam of sonic boom, radial blind, and chaos, with a small dose of desecrate and even a pinch of razor wing. And because I'm sure that some of you were shaking your heads at that, allow me to explain. It has the knockdown of Sonic Boom. It has the blinds, just like Radial Blind, uh, only it's any enemy within range sends that wave of blindness out. So it's centered on the enemies instead of on you, and with a good range, I mean, it, it just gets to be pretty preposterous how wide of an area you can blind. It also forces a radiation status, which not only emulates chaos, but it also reduces their accuracy, which emulates razor wing. And the fact that it produces health orbs when it kills enemies anyway, and only 50% at that, it's not unlike Desecrate, though it is similar. Okay, so here's the first build called the Blood Mage build. We call it that because you're compounding many effects from health orbs. So you're going to want Equilibrium and Health Conversion. Equilibrium will fill up your energy, and once it is full, Health Conversion will then work. They do not work simultaneously. We are then going to use Fleeting Expertise and Streamline, both at 4, to give us a 175% efficiency, which is the soft cap. We're using Vitality because we are focusing on health, and Oberon can self-regen. We are using Transient Fortitude and Power Drift for 175% power strength, and we are offsetting the negative duration from Fleeting and Transient using Constitution and Prime Continuity, which will, oddly enough, give you an additional 1% from 105 to 106 if put in the top left corner. We are also equipping the Arcane Pulse feature on both the Helmet and the Cyan Dana. This will give us the ability to restore, with one health orb, up to 225 health, as well as 27.5 energy or 450 armor. That puts a lot of power in one single health orb. So let's take a look at it in action. Alright, so here it is. Sorry about the mess. I was using this earlier to get some health orbs on the ground, so you could see right off the bat that I have three for health conversion. That means I already have about 1,500 armor. It's gonna give you a little bit over uh, about 80% damage mitigation if I remember correctly. They are not able to really hurt me all that much and I could self heal, so really it's no problem. I'm dropping them pretty steadily. I can spam it almost with how quickly I can get energy from this and they're not really posing much of a threat. But at this level, it takes three castings to effectively kill an enemy. So you wanna mainly stop using this after you hit about level 40, unless you're ready to spam this ability. It's very unfortunate. Now, we're using electromagnetic shielding, or we would be if we were in squad, but that's a, basically the closest thing I could find for, a way to, for him to self-damage without just overdoing it and completely obliterating himself. So if you could find a better way for him to self-damage without actually doing a lethal amount, I'd be all about hearing it because that's about the main reason why it's so difficult for him to survive using a Blood Mage build while Necros has it so easy. All right, so this build is the Baphomet build. I'll explain why I call it that in the exhibition. For this build, we're going with Overextended Stretch and Cunning Drift because we are going for maximum range. Since we're going maximum range, and since it's primarily going to be a melee build, again, you'll see why in the exhibition, we are going to give him additional slide and friction with Cunning Drift, as well as Sprint Speed with Armored Agility. Now because it's melee, we are also going to focus on face tanking using Rage, and we are going to augment his health using Vitality. This isn't just important because he is a health-based frame, but because we are trying to take health damage periodically to get that energy spike. Armored Agility instead of Rush or Steel Fiber uh, we're going that route because we don't need that much sprint speed since we have the sliding from Cunning Drift, and we don't need that much armor because we don't expect to be hit too terribly often. We are, uh, of course, going with maximum efficiency, but we're offsetting the negative penalty from fleeting with prime continuity.
All right, so this little tidbit is something I like to call the Baphomet build because it has such a far reach and the Baphomet in the Age of the Templars was something that even the Templars prayed to. Also, I have this really scary dagger from which I ritually murder people. Now, you may notice I'm really getting a whole lot of overshields there and that is because due to the Dark dagger, I am certifiably a shield tank with Oberon. You want to go maximum range on this because this affects so many targets and it has such a long duration on the status effects that you're going to wind up being able to maintain a severely powerful overshield for the most part. Now, you do uh, function a little bit with rage, so anytime somebody actually gets past your shields, it's going to actually benefit you because your energy will spike and at that point you're going to be able to just drop them. Now you're actually going to see it here in a minute when I get past this guy. Notice I'm capping out so easily with my overshields, but they're kind of chewing through them a little bit. We are going up against level 75 enemies. This is, or sorry, 85. And notice, uh, let's see, I think it was right about this point they start chewing through my stuff. It's getting a little low, not too bad. So, oh, here we go. Now notice my energy just spiked and okay, well I just dropped them and I just pump up the healing and we're good to go. And oh look, over got, er, already got over shield. And uh, we also got 300 health because we're still rocking the arcane pulse features. So it's a good way to get both tiers going at the same time. All right, in our final build, this is one that I like to call the Tree of Life, which we'll discuss during the actual exhibition. It is another Rage tank build focusing on vitality. We are going to make back energy with Rage, and we are going to supplement that with Steel Fiber. Now that's going to set our armor at about 315, which isn't that great, I know, but you're going to understand why during the exhibition. So Transient Fortitude, we're going to offset that with Constitution. We also have Fleeting Expertise, didn't have room for Streamline, so we went with Maximum, and we're using Hallowed Reckoning in place of Streamline, and that's also going to help us out with some armor. Now, due to the power strength of Power Drift and Transient Fortitude, we're at 170%, offset again by the Duration Mods. Alright, so now we are going to take a look at the Tree of Life in action. So this is a pretty solid build and it really surprised me. Now the reason why we call this the Tree of Life is because you're planting your ass still and you are just tough as nails. Oberon has a very serious weakness in one of his powers and that is that it is completely immobile and it has a long casting speed. So it's not like Vauban where you could throw down his Bastille without interrupting your running or anything like that. It's just there and it's in the way. It's got such a serious weakness, it's kind of ridiculous. So we're doubling down on that. We are planting our ass still, we are using Hallowed Ground, we are dropping them with Hallowed Reckoning. And that's going to give us, with all things said and done, about 847 armor, which is going to give you about 75% damage mitigation. Beyond that, you're also going to be doing close to 8,000 damage, around 79.22, and that's to beings that don't mitigate your damage. Now, Infestation, they're not going to mitigate it as much as other factions like the Grenier would. That's what makes it such an effective build. First off, they got to come to you, which is something that is absolutely what this build needs. You know, you want people coming to your hallowed ground. You want people coming close enough so that you can use Reckoning and you could make use of both of those stacking armor buffs. It really does add up. And notice we went from 75 to 100 to 120 and we're still melting them. They can't break my shields. They can't get through. And when they do, they're barely even nicking my helm. Well, that's it for today, guys. This is Finn signing off. If you like what you saw, feel free to like the video. If you really enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe. I try and put content out regularly, and I'm looking forward to talking some Warframe with you. Until next time, stay safe, Tenno.